Hi everyone, I'm Tracy from Tracy Jane Design and welcome to my first video tutorial. I often get asked lots of questions about how to do various things um, and the most recent thing that I've been asked about is decoupage. This is probably because my most recent piece, um, this lovely bureau, um, has got lots of decoupage on it. So today I thought I would give you a little demonstration of how to use decoupage with your own projects. There are lots of different things that you can use for decoupaging, which is basically the art of sticking something on. Um, you can use cardstock, which I have here, which is lots of different lovely cards that you can buy in packs. You can buy them from local craft shops or online. Um, and they usually come with lots of different lovely patterns. Um, this is the pack that I've got today for a project that I'm using. Um, you can also use newspaper, magazines, comics, wallpaper, napkins, there's all sorts of things. Depending on what you're using to decoupage, the method will be slightly different. Um, but today I'm going to show you how to use cardstock. So, this is a drawer from um, a current piece that I'm working on, a desk. Um, I've already painted the drawer, it's had three coats of Frenchique Mother Duck, which is one of my favourite colours. Um, and I've also painted the inside because I like my pieces to be complete and I think painting the inside of drawers and cupboards finishes, finishes it all off. You'll also see I've chalk marked the bottom of the drawer so that I know wh where it goes when it goes back into the desk. Right, so you need to um, obviously cut your card, uh, your paper down to the right size. Um, so when you're looking at your drawer, if you work out, measure your area and decide where you want the paper to sit. When you're cutting, always make sure that the um, paper is slightly bigger than the area that you want to cover. And I'll show you why in, in a little while. So I've already cut my piece to size here, so I need to stick that on. I'm going to use um, French Eek finishing coat for this. This is great stuff, it does a lovely job of finishing the paint work, but also you can stick and you can seal it with it as well. So I'm just going to pop a little bit into a jar, and then you just literally want to paint some on the, f the front coat of your drawer. It doesn't matter too much if it runs onto the paintwork because I am going to finish this piece uh, with the finishing coat anyway. So that's got a nice coverage on there and you also need to paint the same on the back of your paper. Just remember, remind yourself of which way is up on your paper. Okay. So I'm just going to pop this on. I'll show you the camera at the camera in a minute, but I just need to make sure it's all lined up. Like I said, you've cut your paper a little bit bigger than the area that you want to cover, and there's a reason for that, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. So when the um, paper is positioned where you want it, you need to just make sure you press it down nice and firm and make sure that it's stuck all the way around. We don't want it coming off. There we are. So then you need to leave that for a little while to dry. Um, it's probably best to leave it overnight actually but leave it for at least three or four hours to dry so that it's well dry before you start the next process. So once your paper is lovely and dry, and I did this one yesterday so it's dry enough to show you the next stage, um, you need to get your sandpaper out. So nice and dry and then you need to get your sandpaper out and this is where the magic happens. What you're going to do is very lightly sand away the excess paper around the edges. So I'll show you what I mean. as you work along the edge you're going to be blending the paper in don't 
don't worry about the paint coming off, especially if you're after a slightly aged look. So can you see that the corners are very nice and blended in now? Much better than that side where the paper's just been stuck on. has now become part of the draw front. It doesn't look like it's just been stuck on. I'll just remind you of the before draw. You can actually take this a stage further if you want to. Um, can use your sandpaper to distress the, the front of the paper so it actually looks aged. I'll show you what I mean. Just rub in a few different places just to make the pattern fade away a little bit. I need some clean sandpaper. So now it looks like it's worn and it's been there a long time and not stuck on today. So I've finished sanding um, and I've just given the edges of the drawer um, a little bit of distressing because I want um, to achieve an aged look. The final thing to do is to seal it all, um, stop the paper getting marked, make it washable and to protect it so that it looks good for years to come. So back to the finishing coat, if you remember I poured some finishing coat, French chic finishing coat into a jar and you're literally just going to to coat that on and I'm going to go right over the paintwork this time because I want to finish that off as well. But it's best to go in two directions with this. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial on decoupage and hopefully it's given you some inspiration um, for your own projects. If you would like to um, learn more about this process, I have got a workshop running on Tuesday the 20th of September at 10 o'clock. It's in Bournemouth, so if you're local and you'd like to uh, book a place, then have a look at the website link below um, and you'll find information on all my workshops um, and all my work. And it's been lovely doing this and thank you to my son and his girlfriend who have helped with the filming and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these so thanks for watching guys and catch you soon